Podcasters Roundtable. Am I recording? Yes. Round 59, iTunes search rankings and algorithms. So this round's a little different. I wonder how many times I've actually said that. <laughs> like, have half the rounds been a little different? That would actually be a great thing because, you know, this is a fun platform to experiment on, and that's something I want to do with this show. So we are, uh, you know, why did this round happen? Uh, it's a little bit more, I don't, wouldn't call it how-to. This won't be how-to, this will be insights. And uh, we don't have a new round tabler, although Angelo is here, and I, don't, I think maybe he's been here one time, so it's kind of new, but he's been here before. So no new round tablers, which is something I try to do, but this was a private conversation that uh, Rob Walsh and Daniel, mostly those two, uh, Dave and I were sort of chiming in here and there, and it was all about rankings and search. And the bottom line was, if we are still confused about what it is, then this is something that needs to be shared and public, right? Because that is the whole uh, sort of goal of this show, is to take those awesome private conversations that we were already having between uh, people who are sort of behind the scenes in podcasting and making them public. So that's why this happened. And again, let's, um, I guess let's start by meeting the roundtable because we want to qualify why certain people are here and maybe why others aren't. I won't get into that. But we'll just start right next to me, at least as it appears on the Google Hangout Air, if you're just listening to this. He's right next to me. Uh, Rob Walsh, veteran, veteran of the Podcasters Roundtable, I think. Hey, Ray, thanks for having me back on. It's been, been a while, though. It's been a while. Uh, yep. Awesome, so, and Rob? It, what are you, uh, okay, so why on this, I, I know, again, on the whole issue with iTunes, there's, I think there's a lot of, <laughs> to put it nicely, a lot of myths out there about how iTunes does and does not work, and it's something I've been playing with and looking at and talking to the folks with Apple about f since it's launched, and we'll get into that more in, in the roundtable as we go over some of the the truth and, and some of the myths behind it. Yeah, and that also brings up a recent conversation that you and I had an exchange about myths and one that I'm not sure I even want to say is, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't even know if I want to go down yeah. that road, but we will, we will, because mm -hmm. why not? Dave Jackson, mm -hmm. welcome back. Co-host Dave Jackson. Yeah, Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. I think I'm here uh, more as like to represent the average podcaster because I know Daniel knows like the API back end of iTunes and things like that and I've had enough experience with, with other people getting to different lists that I can say like I know you don't need three episodes I've had multiple people do that with one so uh, I think I'm going to be here just to make sure everything is getting translated into English that's perfect you are the host I'm here to, to hopefully lead the outline Daniel's going to really ask a lot of the same questions that he asked already in, in private. And uh, Dave's going to keep us on track with the chat and make sure that if you guys have answers about iTunes search, rankings, the algorithms that go in the back of iTunes, obviously none of us are from iTunes. But as Rob mentioned, he has played with this for years. I know Rob has run test after test and has seen the evolution of iTunes. And, um, you know, Daniel is always digging deep. And, you know, for reasons of his own, he's got a sort of an iTunes-based product, right? Your ratings and reviews. So that's part of how this conversation came about. So Daniel, co-host, welcome back. Thank you very much. I am on minimal equipment tonight because I'm about to move my studio. But I am, yeah, not only interested in this because I like digging into the deep things. I'm, I'm the type that whenever I hear someone mention a number or mention certain studies or things that they've done, I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, did you factor this in? Or, hey, you didn't mention this detail, or does it consider this? Or that information seems a little bit flawed. So I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation. Awesome. And on the end, last but definitely not least, Angelo, welcome back to the roundtable. Hey, everybody. And Angelo's from Blueberry, and we got Rob from Lipson, so look at how nice we're playing together. <laughs> yeah, trying. <laughs> I bet a lot of people think you guys hate each other. Not true. No, no we, uh, hate we hate SoundCloud. Aha, there we go. <laughs> yes. We can all team up against uh, a mutual disinterest. We'll just, <laughs> just in there, SoundCloud. There's, there's definitely some rivalry, so just don't forget we've been in this space uh, maybe six months uh, less than Lipson, but that's about it. Yeah, we, we were both in this space before iTunes was in the space, and I think that's a 
big difference yeah. differentiator. I mean, if you were in the space before iTunes, you were crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Trailblazers, yeah. That could be a whole hour discussion right there. I, yeah, I guarantee it. You know, and that makes me want to I, – I won't. I won't derail this with talk of feed burner and all that. I, Ray, don't go there. I was. You let me go there. I was just curious. Since since you brought it up, being in the space, there was a time when a lot of podcasters used feed burner because they needed those iTunes tags. But with Lipson and Blueberry, what was the first year where a podcaster could just be on Lipson or, or Blueberry and have their feed just all done for them, where feed burner really wasn't necessary? Uh, with with Lipson, it was right as soon as it launched. Right. Uh, so as soon as iTunes it, launched, as soon as iTunes launched, they had added, they went and added the extra tags. So within like a couple of week, within a couple of days or weeks, it was it was pretty quick. Yeah. Gotcha. And then back then, of course, there was the precursor to PowerPress was PodPress. So a lot of people were using that until the developer completely abandoned it, leaving thousands. <laughs> Yeah, the broken site. <laughs> yeah, I'm just is was it a PR thing, Rob? Why were so many people getting on putting feed burner in between? Well, it, it was it was just about um, at the time there was no way for some some of it was about statistics, getting some stats. Um, other parts of it was it was easy to move it around if you needed to move your show around. In the early days, there's a lot of podcast hosts that were coming and going. I mean. You know, how many people remember Podango and, and others like that? I mean, there was a lot that have gone under. So I, I think FeedBurner at one point in time was more about security and being able to move around, but, but FeedBurner has caused a lot of issues in the last couple of years and uh, definitely been more trouble than it's worth. And, and I've yeah. stopped record. I used to recommend it. I mean, I had tutorial up on how to do it. We all I did, interviewed sure. Rick, Rick Clow back before iTunes launched about FeedBurner, and I used FeedBurner, um, but... At this point in time, I can't recommend it anymore, and then I just, you know, it's 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 dead man walking. Yeah, I think that lends some cred to the whole uh, the whole group that the fact that we've been long enough around long enough that we used to actually recommend it, and now we don't. Right? Things change. And Dave, you, I think you just wrote a post about about that and how like, you know, something related to how things change relating to feed burner. Right? What did you say about it? Well, just the fact that um, it, at the time there really wasn't much of a choice of how are you going to do this RSS feed. So we all jumped on it, and then when Google bought it, we're all like, yay, this is even better. But, you know, my favorite is it will just stall every now and then. You know, iTunes is looking at FeedBurner, FeedBurner is looking at your stuff, and FeedBurner just goes on break and never comes back. And so right there, that's deal breaker. Like, who needs, you know, reason number two and three, so... You gave a classic Dave analogy, and I'm not recalling. Do you recall what it was? I don't remember my classic <laughs> Dave analogy. I can, I'll go look it up. Go look that up for us. Yeah. As we dive into, uh, and now we'll actually, so our connection to iTunes, don't use FeedBurner, use PowerPress <laughs> or Libsyn, and then we'll dive, now we'll dive actually into iTunes. And again, Rob and Angelo have been working on, you know, neither of you are obviously from iTunes. I suspect you've had plenty of interactions with iTunes, some insights into how things work back there, right? Yeah, yeah I'm sure we have the same contacts over there. Um and it, for the most part, uh, they try to keep us up to date with everything that's going on. So, But uh, every once in a while, they have an issue, and it's like you have to pry it out of them. <laughs> but for the most part. I mean, they've been really good um, communicating with us, I believe. And, and, you know, they've even been out to some of the shows. Steve was at the L.A. PodFest um, at the end of September, and he was talking with podcasters. And, um, you know, so, you know, they, they're getting out. In, in meeting with people. Uh, they were at NMX uh, w back in, in the fall or spring, excuse me. Um, so they're, they're getting out there. Now, they're not going to tell everything. I mean, they're not going to tell certain algorithms, as, as they said. You know, they don't want people to know everything because then people will game it. So some of it is left to us to ping and poke and pod and prod and, and figure out based on what we see and what you know, feedback we get how it is which, actually working, and that's what I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, a I've done a lot. Matter of fact, matter of fact, there's one experiment going on today, and we'll talk about some numbers here. Um, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll put this out to people. What do you think today? How many new downloads for a new show do you think it would take to get into the top 100 of the top overall of the top 200? Make it crack the top 100 of the top 200. I mean, we want to guess how many new subscribers it would take. 
Well, it, it feels so like a trick question. I want to say like 15, but it's like, I don't know, 55. I'm going to guess 65. Uh, this right. is overall. The, the, so, so actually the number was 244. Okay. So 244 new subscribers in a day, in the, in the first part of the day, this was one that launched at 10 a.m. at 2 p.m., um, four hours, 244 subscribers. They were in the top 100. Now, how long they'll be there is the next question, right? What do you? So, what do you think? So, okay, let me interject a PSA here, a public service <laughs> announcement that we should probably lead, lead off with. Uh, you know, about podcasters focusing on things like rankings and algorithms and what it really means to be in the top for your show, and probably why you're better off not focusing so much on that. I, you know, I don't want to be ignorant. Um, it's always good to know what's going on. And as you see your show move through iTunes, it's curious, how does that work? But, you know, Rob, what would you say? So because that, regarding that experiment, someone got in the top 100. Now, that's probably going to do a little bit more for your show than, say, new and noteworthy in your category, which a lot of people obsess about, right? So as we talk about these things, any kind of public service announcement about, about not obsessing about these things. We've seen people ditch their feeds and start over for something that's probably not going to do anything for them. Yeah, and, and a lot of these people, I've asked them, I'm like, why do you want to be a new and noteworthy? And their answer is, so I can say that I can get somebody to be, as a guest on my show, I can show them that my show was important. So I send them a screenshot, and I'm like, use Photoshop. I mean, <laughs> It's basically a lie anyways. I mean, it's not I mean, right. too much for you. Yeah, I mean, if you're gaming the system, then don't waste all the time and just use Photoshop and send them a screenshot. Look, here I was featured, and heck, move yourself to the top banner. I mean, if you're going to do it, lie, lie well. You know, Sorry. such a, a much better thing would be a uh, plug to shout out to my podcast reviews, but use your podcast reviews that you have and say, look what others have said about my podcast or okay. look at what others are getting. Yeah, in his last episode, Paul Culligan said he had a show go into New and Noteworthy, and he said it, it like made it on the, I think it was the 8th of uh, this month, and he looked at the downloads, and he had 32 mm-hmm. downloads for that day. So it's not, you know, it's not total number of downloads. I guess we're going to get into what it takes, but it's not the 10,000 downloads that everybody thinks it is. Yeah, and I mean, that's, you know, every listener is important, right? So some people are, they, you know, they'll argue that, Hey, that one person could be someone big. So in the case of that top that show that's that's seeing 244 new subscribers top 100, what do you think in practical terms that's actually going to do for them? Well, of course, they do a, you know, they did the one method that seems to work for a new show launch, which is an email list to your email list which you have a relationship with with a direct link to your show. You can't buy an email list from somebody and then expect it to work. Right. So you know, if you have your own established email list with your own fans and you launch a podcast, that's usually when we see it working for shows driving themselves up in the top 100. But what's going to do for this person? The email list just letting people know that, hey, my show's launched is, you know, is prefer, you know, that's a great marketing method that works. Um, and now they've got the people launched and they've got their show launched in iTunes and they've got subscribers, which helps them now going forward for the long term. And we'll get into it later about search results because search results are not just current subscribers, which, you know, if we get into the algorithm of the top 200, we can, we'll talk about that. But search is about the total number of subscribers all time. So that helps them there. So it, it, it's growing. You know, my advice to all podcasters is when you launch, you only focus on iTunes. You think about iTunes, you get everybody you know to go to iTunes and subscribe. Sure, you're missing out on some Android people or this or that, but it helps you with the search results long term. And even if people aren't going to consume you there, at least you've gotten that click and that subscribe let's tackle <clears throat> let's tackle search then since you brought it up and you you know you said there focus on iTunes it helps you wish search mm-hmm. all-time subscribers so explain let's talk a little bit about how search works in iTunes and that's probably fairly broad wherever you think yeah. is best to jump in on that is good for me but oh, well you know D- Daniel will tell you Daniel knows this one just as well as I Yeah, search has changed in iTunes over the years, and for good reasons, I think, because they've usually made changes, just like Google, when someone starts abusing a system or when they realize that the algorithm can be improved or something's just not working well. For iTunes, the only two fields 
that are searched in iTunes are your title tag and your author tag. Now that's show level and episode level. So that is a total of four places, but your descriptions, your subtitles, uh, that is not searched at all in iTunes. So stop stuffing your descriptions <laughs> with keywords. I, I, I've had people say to me, I've got, I, when you search for Rush Limbaugh, my show doesn't come up and I've got it in my description. What's wrong? And I'm like, well, first off, you're not Rush Limbaugh, and second, they don't search there. So, yeah, and, and by the way, I have done tests on description to prove that it doesn't work. If, if you look at um, Podcast 411, Casey Starter 411, and Porter's Podcast, you'll see in the description of all of them, there's a slug. It's called Podcast 411 Network. And that's the only place it is is in the description for those three shows. And then on Today and iOS, I have it just in the author tag. And the only place when you search for that slug in iTunes that shows up is the one that has it in the author and not in any of the three that are in the description. And it's been in the description in those shows since January. Um, do you guys follow the advice that we have in PowerPress for SEO? Well, the, uh, let the audience know what you're talking about. Yeah, so in PowerPress, um, there's an option there for podcasting SEO. Uh, there's one checkbox where we give you advice. Um, we specifically hit both the author and the uh, title tags as far as search, um, but we also emphasize the importance of the subtitle, not for for searching and indexing, but simply for the fact that that's your news heading. The first seven to eight words that you put in there when someone does a search, that's what they're going to see. So ne not necessarily that it's a search result, but it's your opportunity to really sell someone who sees your search result to say, all right, I want that podcast over another. Is and this so, the same subtitle as Lipson has, Rob? Because I don't know where that shows up besides someone's own iTunes desktop software, which I've seen. Yeah, I, and what I tell people on the subtitle is what you put in for the title of your episode, just copy it over into the subtitle. And, 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 this, and in the, the channel level, take the first sentence of your description and put it in the subtitle. Well, yeah, and... I, there are I two different places. The, the subtitle for your overall show, the one and only place that shows up, uh, and then they could update this at some time, but the one and only place is one particular view of your own podcast subscriptions. That's where you see the right. overall That's subtitle. Right. The individual subtitles show up in the episode listing in iTunes as well as in your subscriptions. And uh, then that's where, like Angela was saying, it's only the first few words. By default, that pulls from your content. Every now and then, I will put something different in there. Like maybe if I say, um, uh, here's, for example, the four cornerstones of a great podcast. And then in the subtitle, I'll just put content presentation, uh, production, promotion. Dave. And that displays. Dave, if, if you have the ability and opportunity, can you pull up? your screen and maybe show a couple things. Now I know the audio audience won't see this, but this would be a great reason to go back to the video if we get it. So if, if Dave, if you see any example of what we're talking about on your iTunes software, pull that up. If not, don't worry about it. Well, this is, this is the <clears throat> power press thing that uh, Angela is talking about, I believe right here, right? Yeah. Exactly. Just that. Yep. Yeah. So you would want to check that. And then I'm assuming when you go into a post, you have more things to play with. Yeah, not only does it enable those fields for you, but it'll give you some suggestions. Got it. So when you go, I would love to see, Dave, if you go into iTunes, I would love to see like what that subtitle, how that looks in iTunes, just so my brain can, just so we can see it. But anyways. Where so would that be? Just to, just to add to that, just go it's, search even, in iTunes. it's even more important from a mobile device because you really only have like a touch before you kind of lose the opportunity to get someone to subscribe to your show. Um, and we should actually emphasize next the importance of actually why search is way more important than new and noteworthy. Oh, yeah, it's great. Well, Take us there. Uh, before we go on to that, All right. it, be, we are talking about different lists. And uh, Rob and I were chatting about how many different lists there are. And actually, I think I came up with six different places in iTunes where you could be featured or where you're, quote, ranking, unquote. Wait, are you, splitting, out, you're, you're splitting us out into another topic already? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just before we talk about how this affects some of the all right, things. All right, all right. Uh, number, number one, new and noteworthy. And there's an overall and individual categories have their own new and noteworthy. So, so that's wait, in what two is this, places. What do you mean number one? What are you saying? Oh, this is just 
I've just numbered these. The number, the order is, so I'll put it like this, letter A. Okay. Uh, and let's add this to a, a new and noteworthy and to clear up a myth here. <laughs> the main page of new and noteworthy is 100% hand curated by the folks at Apple. The comedy page, new and noteworthy, is 100% curated by the folks at Apple. All the other main all the other categories and subcategories are a mixture of curation and algorithm. Mm -hmm. Right. So there is this myth that you have eight weeks. This is what I, this is the can I didn't kind of want to not open. That you have eight weeks to appear in new and noteworthy. I uh, kind of true, but not true because of this mix that Rob you're talking about, right? Right. Apple at any time, the guys at Apple can feature any show in any category, regardless of the age. You'll see sometimes shows get featured in, in new and noteworthy in a sub in a category or subcategory that are a year, two years, three years old because they're relevant to something in news or an event or the guys at Apple just like them or whatever it is. Apple can hand curate in any of the categories and overwrite the algorithm. But the algorithm has no play at all in comedy and the main page. Why the, comedy? Are the, why are they? that's the biggest section. That's they the most. Yeah, I mean that's numbers. where. Yeah, that's where the big. Yes, yeah, where the big. Well, section. Technically, the biggest section is uh, the the religion, religion. spirituality. Well, well uh, I'm I'm talking download wise. Yeah. Download wise. Yeah, and actually, just to expand on that too, um, the new and noteworthy. If you even look at it in the most advanced view in a desktop, it's limited to 2,000, and they only show now the top level. So that's a good lead in to why search is way more important because otherwise you're competing with what 32,000 shows <laughs> and okay yeah so lead into so let's loop well daniel you will you have your you had your list right well yeah i'll, I'll over the i'll overview this list and then we can jump back into search so new and noteworthy overall and categories uh, the top 200 podcasts overall and categories and i know we'll talk a bit more about what each of these uh, do and how you rank in them uh, then top 200 episodes overall and categories the what's hot section, there's, again, overall and categories. There are the search results. And then there are the special features like editor's choice, featured providers, seasonal things, that kind of stuff. Those are the, the six different types of ranking lists that I could come up with in iTunes. All right. So back to search. So, uh, Angelo, you were saying that this was a good place to uh, talk about why search is probably more important or is more important than something like new and noteworthy. Oh, right. You want to gag a little every time you have to say that? <laughs> well, it's just, you know, if you, if you look at new and noteworthy and all these categories, there's only, it's only so big until they allow some kind of pageation. Uh, paging feature to keep browsing and browsing and browsing. As long as they set that limit to 2,000, um, there's always going to be a limit. Wait a minute. What do you mean the limit is 2,000? So if you look at iTunes and you browse in, on a desktop in any individual category, and you keep scrolling down, scrolling down, it'll keep pulling more results and displaying them. When you get to the bottom, there will be a bottom. That's 2,000, and then that's it. There's no other way to keep paging. Okay, then that's for that's for these like these lists. Like, is that what you mean? Yeah, every list that we looked at, the ones Daniel mentioned too, um, re, you know, we research it all the time. They do not exceed two thousand currently. And some of them are cut off at two hundred, like the top lists are cut off at two hundred. Right, right. Gotcha. All right, so back to search. What again? Where? What do we want to focus on as podcasters when it comes to iTunes? What's the primary place? What what do we do for search? Well, here's, I think, uh, what most people are wondering. If you have a podcast and someone else does, and you're both going after the same ter search terms, what determines which order your podcast ranks in a search result? Rob? And, and that comes down to how many total subscribers you've had all time. For, well, first off, it, it depends on what's in your title and your in your in your uh, in your author tag, but let's say you had the same keywords in title and author tag. Like I don't know, let's say iOS today and today in iOS. So both of you know have iOS today. So if you were to search iOS today in iTunes right now, 
and you do that, you will find out that Today in iOS is ranked ahead of iOS Today. So the reason why is Today in iOS has had more people all time click the subscribe button than iOS Today. How do you overcome that someone who's been, someone whose show is, uh, the common complaint is their show is, is pod yeah. faded. Yeah. Dead, is gone, but I can't overcome the fact that they were there first. Um, get more subscribers. That's the only way to overcome it is get more subscribers. Um, yeah, I mean, it really, it's, it's horrible. If you're starting out as a new podcaster and you've got 15 episodes out and you're working your tail off and you come across a show that was released in, Ju say, let's say July of 2005, released four episodes. The last one was August of 2005, and it's ahead of you in the search results. Um, the fact is people were finding it over time, clicking that subscribe button, and he's built up a search algorithm, you know, yeah. a, 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 a search war chest, I guess you'd call it. And some of yeah. the some of the content's still relevant. That's why people mm -hmm. are still subscribing, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. they may not realize that the show's dead. In fact, they might just listen to one and say, ooh, I want more of that, and subscribe, and then they get another point on their record, I guess. So to speak. Here's an example of one of those. I have a podcast about the TV show Once Upon a Time, and we're the number two result behind... Apple's or uh, ABC's official Once Upon a Time podcast, which hasn't had any episodes in almost three years, but it's with the writers. So, of course, that's going to get a lot more subscriptions and downloads. So, let's go past all time subscribers. And, and Rob, you said search results are, as you know, sorted based on all time subscribers after relevant, said after relevant hits in the title and author fields. So, those right. are actually more important. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to have the right words when someone searches to match up. Uh, so if the keywords aren't there in your author and your title field, then you're not going to get into the search results. Um, so it's important to have, have those key, right keywords. Now, as we talked earlier, you can't be spamming the keywords. There was one recently, a podcaster was hosting with us, and he was saying, hey, you know, he was telling, he was emailing me about something. I, I came back to him and I warned him. I go, hey, look. I looked at your, your author keywords, and you're really spamming it here, and Apple would just want to let you know. Apple told us to let people know to stop doing that, and he's like, what are you talking about? I'm not spamming it, and he had in a show interviews people like, and then he had da-da-da-da-da, you know, it was like um, Seth Godin, um, Zig Ziglar, Oprah Winfrey, da-da-da, and I'm like, the guy launched a show in, in, in September, and I'm thinking, wow, the interview with Zig Ziglar is going to be kind of boring, so Zig, what have you been up to lately? I haven't heard you, <laughs> you know, and, and well, Zig died three years ago, so He's clearly keyword spamming. Um, so, cut, you know, keep it down on your. Dave, it's, don't control yourself there. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you have to be relevant. And Apple said to me, they are going to stop featuring shows that are keyword spamming. So, if you want any chance to be featured by Apple, you got to look at it. And that, that, mat that doesn't matter who you are. Regardless of the size of your show, if you're keyword spamming, they're going to cut down on featuring you. And we yeah, just, go ahead, oh, Let me just expand on that. Featuring is not limited to, say, the, the no, new and noteworthy. They could cut you out of that 2,000 list I just talked about mm -hmm. in every single category. So mm -hmm. do not play with that fire. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And we've seen Apple adjust to, uh, to this sort of gaming before, right? Yeah, well, they the description, as Daniel mentioned earlier, right. people used to game that, and that that, that no longer in, in the search results. Right. So that's a good uh, example of uh, it will happen, <laughs> and uh, you know, oftentimes a few people will ruin it for the rest of us. But for the people who are doing what they should be doing, we talk about titles and um, you, you, so show title keywords mm -hmm. relevant without stuffing episode titles as well, right? How does that play? <laughs> Episode titles are really important. I, I mean, I, I've rearranged how I used to do my episodes, which was really wrong, which was, you know, episode 15, Today in iOS podcast. And and I've gone now to, to put in a couple of words that or items that I talked about. If I was talking about iOS 9 in, in an episode of Today in iOS, I, I'll mention iOS 9. I, or if I'm mentioning the iPhone, I'll put iPhone in there. But I'm going to put in words that I think people are going to be searching for that were relevant in that episode. And that's important, too. you got to keep it relevant to what's in your episode. Yeah, and why? So tell us why that, I mean, you just admitted you were doing it wrong. So why was it wrong? 
it was wrong because I didn't have any real relevance in the title of my shows, and that's the only thing that's going to show up, other than the author information, that's going to show up with with in the search results. So when you go in, if you go into iTunes now and you search for iOS 9 Beta 1, you're going to find an episode or a couple episodes of my podcast as the top results in those search results. Right. Do I dare bring up episode number in the beginning at all? Do we do we want to go down that road? Because that probably varying opinions here. That doesn't really yeah. affect your SEO, like your searchability. It can affect the human factor because if someone types in a search and they see episode five, they have no idea to know whether that is relevant to their search. If it's truncated, which many browsers and devices will truncate it. But your individual episode search results also make your overall show show up. So if you type, type in a search, if that term appears nowhere in your title, your subtitle, description, keywords, but it's for one of your episodes matches, your podcast shows up in addition to your individual episode. Yeah, so rather than actually keyword stuffing your author tag with who you might interview, if you actually interview those people, then you have them in the episodes and you don't have to keyword stuff. <laughs> yeah, that that it all depends on the situation. So you only need the keywords in the title. Um, the time it makes sense to use the author field for that is like um, a good example would be is if you had a co-host for certain episodes and other episodes you don't. Um, and also if you put in your title their talent name, like Mr. T or whatever, and then you know, or The Rock, for example, and then you can still put in their real name in the author tag. Um, at least in my opinion, that's acceptable. Now, when you start putting people's names in there and they're not even in the show, then I think that's crossing the line. Cool. So, Dave, Daniel, any more questions about search? That you, Dave, do you think the average podcaster understands how search works? And I do. They, do any of us really understand? But I, I just go with what you guys said. I don't worry about. I don't even really worry. I mean, I I I think I put podcast consultant in my author tag. But other than that, that's I just focus on the title of the episode. From that, I, I don't dig any deeper at this point. Well, yeah. can, or, I didn't look at the, head, uh, uh, the outline for today all the way down, but are you going to talk about the feature that, that Daniel Lewis suggested about customizing the title? Let's talk about it now. Well, it's... Uh... Yeah, if you can change your title as it appears in iTunes, which PowerPress does, or like if you're using your Libsyn RSS feed and publishing your podcast on a separate website, you can also use Libsyn's RSS feed to give your podcast episodes a separate title from your website. And where that can be great is um, you might be able to put in the name of your overall show into the end of your individual episode title, or you could reformat that episode title in a way that works better for iTunes or iTunes search or what puts about it relevant. Do you have an example? Well, yeah, one, uh, here's an example. Um, on your website, maybe you have uh, 10 ways to be awesome hyphen podcast episode one. On your website, where it's in combination with your blog, you have to indicate in the title, this is a podcast episode. But that's not necessary in iTunes because people know it's a podcast episode. So instead of saying podcast episode one, you could simply say episode one at the end of the title or something like that. That gives you an idea of how you can make it special. Well, um, I can kind of dig into that deeper um, and it'll probably create a whole nother topic. <laughs> but the your web SEO is directly impacted by picking really good titles for the content in the paragraphs that you put in the page, right? But your keywords that you're using for iTunes are really meant for a rudimentary search if you think of it in terms of a, a Google search versus iTunes. iTunes is very rudimentary. They're just taking keywords out and taking the, the singular version of a word that might have a apostrophe S or whatnot to, to really find a search result. Um, where Google has super intelligence on the search. Um, so you really don't want the type of keywords you're going to use for iTunes in your title that you want on your web SEO. And this lets you separate it out. And the cool thing by doing that with PowerPress is that Yoast is going to see what, like if you use Yoast SEO plugin, um, it's going to see what you really want your search engine to see 
while you can really focus on the podcasting part separate without it affecting Yoast's results. How about some of the other lists in iTunes? Like yeah, let's people do wonder ranking. what does it take to rank in some of right. these others? So let's, yeah, let's dive into ranking. So Daniel, he did sort of switch the subject on us, but he gave he gave these lists these the list that you gave, the ABCs of where you can be found on iTunes, right? Mm -hmm. You want to breeze over that again? New and noteworthy, top 100 podcasts, top 200. Uh, sorry, top 200 podcasts, top 200 episodes. What's hot? The search results and special features. Any any number one? It, it, either any of those a number one place <laughs> for you? Well, uh, the top 200 list overall, people will come across the way it's set up because uh, it's right there on the, especially on the desktop, it's pretty prominent, and it's even prominent uh, especially on the iPad version. So being at the top of the top 200 list, getting to the top 10 of a category list. Those are good things to happen. If you can get in the top 10 of any of those lists, in subcategories and categories, um, people will discover you. Right. Yeah, let's talk about, a little bit about that in terms of, because everyone, they only focus, I never hear uh, the, these other lists. I only hear new and noteworthy, right? And so what, right? New and noteworthy are category. I mean, it, that's pretty much a, isn't that a so what for the most part, Rob? Uh, in discovery, in terms of who's going to, how many subscribers are you going to get from that? You're not going to get many. I mean, search is number one. So, I mean, if we're looking at what's number two in iTunes, I think the top 200 list comes in after search. I think it's a bit ahead of new and noteworthy. Where, where do you find that list? I'm actually looking at a desktop iTunes, and I see, you know, podcast, all categories. If, you scroll, I, if you're on the iTunes client, just scroll down on the right. I see top episodes, top podcast, featured collections, more to explore, and then yes. So click on that top podcast title, and that takes you to the full list. As Dave's clicking around here in the Got video, uh, I mean, how irrelevant is the desktop software even these days? We know that isn't the majority of people now going through the podcast app to get their yeah. show, right? I mean, and how how much stuff can that really show you? Well, the podcast app again. Uh, the mobile you've got when you look at the podcast app. I'll, I'll do this here. You, you'll see at the bottom one of them is top charts. So one of the items right at the bottom you've got unplayed podcast featured top charts and search. So obviously again we talked about search. So now top charts is the next one that's there. And if you click on the top charts, uh, it will bring you to the you know the top list of shows and then it'll give you the top 200 and the main category and then if you click on the categories then you can go to the subcategories and by default the top 200 list is is the one that's going to get the most play but there is a button there so again if you go to the iTunes podcast app which we all agree is, is the number one place people consume podcasts more so than everywhere else combined and doubled I mean that's you know the podcast app is the big the big dog. Um, your options at the bottom are search, top charts, featured, my podcasts, and unplayed. And, and obviously, the first two are already about what you've you've looked at. And then top charts is the big one, and that's the two top two hundred list. Daniel, what are you showing us? Is this an app? Yeah, this is the podcast app on an iPad. So I went to top charts, and as you can see, it shows the top. Um, yeah, top. I don't know how far down. So it shows by default 40 before I have to click on see all. But you can get video in iTunes? I'm just kidding. It's a total joke. <laughs> Wait, there are video podcasts? <laughs> There's a video podcast? I don't Not, it, no, actually, if you look at the top 200 list for episodes, there are no video ones showing up. Oh. It's all audio in the top 200. All right, another conversation. We'll have that one another day. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, so if you're not... If you're listening to audio only, Daniel is just sort of scrolling through the app here. But, <clears throat> excuse me, does uh, new and noteworthy even appear in the app? Oh, I mean, it's not. It, it's hard to find if it is, that's for sure. I, I, think, I think it's under featured. I'm going to say, know. no one here knows. That's a, That tells me it's, all it's I need a, to yeah. It's under featured. And then under featured, you get new and noteworthy, editor's choice, featured collections. But again, when you go to the featured... It's it's going to be the main category page, and you know you're getting to the main category page when when you're looking at it. Yeah. All right. So people don't stress that too much. Yeah. Man. The importance of search over new and noteworthy. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make your show the good. Importance of, I'd say this. The importance of anything over new and noteworthy. <laughs> awesome. So, hey, Daniel, uh, back to rankings, how we appear in each of these different lists. Why don't you dive into that a little bit or ask questions? Yeah, so... Um, since new and noteworthy doesn't necessarily matter, what does it take to get in the top 200 podcasts in uh, in any category or overall? What does it take? So, so as we talked about earlier, it, only 250 to get you in the top 100 overall in the in the main category. And that show, in that case, happened to get in the top 10 in both its main category and subcategory. No, so, are you saying that's 250 every? New- 250 new subscribers. Okay, so here, here, here. let's do the algorithm. The algorithm for how iTunes top 200 list works is near as we know. D1 plus D1 plus D1 plus D1 plus D2 plus D2 plus D2 plus D3 plus D3 plus D4 plus D5 plus D6 plus D7 divided by 13. And what does that all mean? <laughs> it's going to say. Is gonna explain that right. D, D1 is the number of new subscribers in the last 24 hours. D2 is the number of subscribers in the, the next 24 hours. And D3 is in, in the next. So really what the top 200 list is, is a score that's based on the total number of new subscribers in the last seven days with the weighted average for 24, 48, and 72 hours. And, and, and how we came up to kind of figure that out was way back when, when iTunes first launched, myself, Gary Leland, Derek Colanduno, discovered something it was like the day or two after it launched, that if you hit subscribe and unsubscribe, subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe to unsubscribe, it counted each new one as a new subscription. And we, Gary found a podcast, it was a Polish language podcast, and we ran a script on it, and we drove it up to number one iTunes store, and then we watched it drop. And we kind of had a feel that here's how it's dropping. Now, we couldn't prove that algorithm until iTunes launched their app store in 2008, and, and I had an app that got into the app store, and I was able to run it into the top of my category, and I was watched how many new downloads I got over a period of time and what my ranking was. And when I took that algorithm and I normalized the data off of that, I got a perfect inverse of where my rankings were, kind of validated. Now, you might say, still doesn't prove it. No, it doesn't. But here's what I would say. A simple algorithm is more likely something they would use than a complex algorithm. Now, do you think ratings and reviews factor at all into this? I have not seen any evidence that ratings and reviews factor into the top 200 lists. Uh, The one today had zero ratings and reviews that was up into two, you know, got into the top 100 with no ratings and reviews. Okay, so Uh, now now here's the technical me. So you're saying it doesn't require it, but what we haven't been able to confirm yet is whether ratings and reviews do actually help. But maybe not as much as subscriptions. I've done some with my own podcast where I've asked people, you know, don't subscribe. Just go in and hit the ratings. Go in to give me a rating and review. I'm not asking you to subscribe. You know, and I sent the link out to my ratings and review page and to see if that moved me in the rankings at all. And I didn't see any movement. So it doesn't we, prove it or disprove it. Yeah. But You know, just to add to that, we believe the ratings and reviews um, influence the decision of the Apple team to know what to pick and what not to pick to feature in new and noteworthy in other categories. And, uh, you know, that that topic about the eight weeks, um, there is a slight truth to that, but it's not based on weeks. It's based on how many new podcasts are added each week. Um, We don't know exact number where they make the cutoff, but we know by monitoring how many new podcasts are submitted to iTunes each week, because we monitor that kind of activity, that at about the 60,000 mark, or it depends on the category too, um, they roll off. And, it, and because there's about 2,000 roughly, plus or minus 500 any given week that are added to iTunes, that that's why it, they roll off at roughly the eight-week mark, but sometimes it's six weeks, sometimes it's nine and it's not related to the date. It's related to how fast or how many podcasts are added each week. So <clears throat> what's the difference between the time you have to be featured versus the time you get to stay being featured? I, there may be no solid answer to that, he, but I mean, if you're what featured. I would, here's where I think. Yep. Remember, it's new 
and noteworthy, so it's probably as long as the show seems noteworthy to some level. Maybe right. that's that you're getting a lot of ratings, reviews, new subscriptions, and wow, this show seems to have a lot of momentum behind it with downloads and all of that. Maybe it's simply, well, they've got nothing else to put there and yours is still looking good, so why not keep it there? Right, and anyone, again, any thoughts on what this actually does? If you, Most podcasters are going to be in a subcategory. They're not going to be on any of these on the homepage, on this their top 200 while it doesn't sound like it takes a massive amount, an average podcaster's not going to crack that. They may get new noteworthy in a subcategory. What does this mean for their podcasts? Well, and, and let's clarify, you mean a category, not a subcategory, because now they don't even let you navigate into those subcategories. Okay, we'll explain. Let's talk, let's still talk can. about that. You still can on desktop. You definitely well, still can. Yeah, but... But? What are you saying? Not relevant? Seven, well, what do we say? Eighty percent of down. Well, you know, eighty percent of downloads are mobile. Yeah, or I 70%, agree with that. Seventy seventy percent of downloads are mobile. Eighty percent are iTunes. Yes, that yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely seeing a shift, and it seems like this whole rating. I mean, rankings and, and all of it is shifting with with it because you have a lot less screen real estate, a lot less area you can do stuff in, right? So, I mean, it, we heard that it doesn't take it doesn't take much. Um, but so going back to if you do get in one of these, let's just say in a category, not even a subcategory, um, worth it? Opinions? Um, I can tell you, having had shows that were featured on the front page of New and Noteworthy on the main category page, that your your spike, your jump, if you want to call it whatever you want to call it, hit on your show anywhere from 300 to 1,000, and if you're on a subcategory page, it's a fraction of that. You know, you're talking about 50 to 100 subscribers at best. Yeah, and I, I would even add, you're, it's it's more important that you get a subscriber than you just get, like, one person to listen to one episode because you want subscribers. You don't want just a peak of traffic and then it to flutter out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What's hot? <laughs> I'm just throwing out two-word questions. Mm -hmm. It is a lottery. I've had explained to me it's kind of a lottery, based on a combination of subscribers, new subscribers, and ratings and reviews, and that you get some sort of score, and you get like ping pong balls. The bigger your show is, the more ping pong balls, but everybody gets ping pong balls into the lottery, and it allows shows that are even small to get featured in the What's Hot. So that was kind of how it was explained to me a, a while back from the folks at Apple. Did Dave explain that to you? Because it's a. It sounds like Dave. I heard ping pong balls and lotteries. And <laughs> no, no, that was actually folks at Apple kind of explained because I had asked them about how it kind of worked, and it was like it's like a weighted scoring based on multiple factors. And that so I have it here in my notes. It says how top lists work, uh, and I have that quote. Actually, you said. Uh, what's hot was once described to me as a lottery. New subscribers and ratings added more lottery balls for your show. Right. Each day it pulls new winners. Right. Now, top lists, what are those? That's not top. That's that, What is that? Top lists is different. Well, that, that was kind of the top 200 list. Okay. The, so what's hot is the what's hot section. So if you, there's a what's hot section. When you go into iTunes, you'll see a what's hot section. And, and what's category. hot you're saying is... Basically, momentum behind the podcast, whatever that is, but each little bit of momentum contributes toward getting in there. Like, hey, I happen to be in the what's hot section of, what section am I looking at? Oh, yeah, technology, and then the subcategory, podcasting. School of Podcasting is what's hot. Uh, the Audacity to Podcast is in there. Uh, Podcasters Roundtable is in there. It's basically all the podcasts about podcasting are what's yeah, right. hot. Well, yeah. Where do you see a subcategory? I'm in the desktop, and I, I clicked on categories. I clicked on technology. I do not see where you can scroll, scroll to down. the bottom. The very bo That's the one thing I'm learning tonight is it's been a long time since I've dug this <laughs> deep into iTunes. One thing to uh, – you know what it happens to me all the time is I will go to a specific show, and then you can sort of back out of those sub I mean, You can see it underneath. That's when you can sort of see uh -oh. that tree of categories and subcategories. But yeah, again, and... we're learning this is probably a lot less relevant than it used to be. Yeah, okay. and, and but like Dave, you're not even going in there. You, you, this is this is this is your main hobby and part of your income, and you don't go inside iTunes. I mean, that tells us a lot. 
Yeah, it's just, I'm on my phone. I mean, I, I am one of those 80%. I'm like, I gave up on iTunes. It, it, I remember for a while it was kind of a memory hog, and it just seemed to take longer and longer for it to boot up. So the only time I do now is if I'm troubleshooting. So what's hot? Sum that up. You, Ray. Not You're me. Hot. Daniel. Oh, that, that's nice. Dave. <laughs> We'll talk in private. <laughs> T- Daniel, it's, David, your pay does not increase when you compliment the <laughs> co-host. Basically, momentum for your show is giving you extra tickets, lottery tickets, lottery balls, whatever you want to call it. And that's helping you to show up in there. Cool. Special features you have here. Editor's Choice featured providers, seasonal features. How do these work? These, I, and Rob... You can confirm this probably, but I'm absolutely positive this is true. These are all completely handpicked by the Apple team. Of course, the editor's choice one, Mm -hmm. but like the featured providers. uh, If there's a seasonal thing, like right now, earlier today, I saw a uh, podcast about The Walking Dead. That's not any kind of automated thing. Maybe they're looking at what are the most popular podcasts that talk about The Walking Dead. But but they, they manually fill it, yeah. 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 And 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 I my understanding is they have a bunch of these pages that are hidden away, and they pull them out seasonally, so they keep them going throughout time. So it's good if you know the folks at Apple to say, hey, my sh- if you, when you see one of these features, if yours isn't in there and it should have been, the next time you see one of the folks from Apple, say, you know, the next time you go and feature, you know, something about Game of Thrones, don't forget my Game of Thrones podcast. You know, let them know your show exists. Even if you missed out on this time for them featuring it, most likely it's going to come back around. Most people would say, I mean, you mentioned they were at they made New Media Expo and Podcast Movement. They're floating around like ghosts. Like People don't know who these people are. Who would I tell that to? Um, next time you're at a podcaster event, um, run into one of us and ask us to point them out. Well, you know what's interesting, yeah. too? <clears throat> and they have this new support page, right? There was it support dot iTunesPodcast.com is that what it is? Yeah, they got they went from um, a email support system to a ticketing system, which you, is good because it's easier to manage. Yeah, and yet, on some level, you have some type of way to speak to whoever is behind the curtain, mm-hmm. right? So that's that's been cool. And related to that, um, let's talk about featured providers, uh, what that is, who who gets in there. Daniel, why don't you tell us what featured providers is? You essentially have to have a network to be in there because this is a provider not only of an individual show but of several great shows. A lot of and, podcasters have networks, though. I mean, yeah, but this is like big name network. You, you need an anchor. You need an anchor. I was looking in there. You're going to find stuff like Quick and Dirty Tips Network, uh, Revision Three, Slate, Relay FM, uh, those kinds of things, Gimlet Media and such. That's what you'll see there as one of those bricks in the featured providers. And those podcasters or those networks also have access to this really cool, super secret thing called Site Manager that don't even bother asking for it. You probably can't get it. Well, okay, so... It's, it's, really, it, it, it's really one of those things that you get the invite. It's like, you know, you can't ask to be part of the skulls. They come and grab you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I know my show's network is actually a feature provider now, which is big. We, I mean, yeah, my work has been, uh, and Apple used to put our video podcast, which was launched first with alongside NAP, uh, NASA, they used to put it on iPods that they gave out to schools. So we have a legit history. We mm-hmm. uh, Deep in the video podcast section, we're in audio as well. But Daniel, you're on there too, right? Yeah, Noodle Mix Network. Uh, I was surprised to be able to have noodle mix network i'm not listed as a featured provider but i am on site manager and it's neat well, to you also see... have a page so you have a, a special page that most people don't have that, right. that these networks get so even if you're not listed in that main brick section you still can be found all your shows on one page it looks looks nice yeah now they do have apple does have a way on that support page mm-hmm. you can submit a ticket to have a provider page made for you yeah. and that's an easy page that then you can link to that has all of your podcasts that was one of the more interesting things and that was my link to this new system this new ticket system that apple brought out if you do a pull down list one of the things is request a provider page i thought that was really interesting and i was explained to me that is the simple it's just a simple where it aggregates all your shows in that network on one page you don't get access to site manager um, site, so for those who are in Site Manager, this 
what extra things do those people get to see? I know it's not a secret. Well, it, at one point, at one point in time in the early days, you actually used to get to customize your page. The, that feature doesn't work anymore. But there was a point in time where I could have a custom. I used to have custom colors Are you for my. Sure about that? I recently updated with like logos and changed colors. You can still. No, do no, it. no. I'm not talking on the main page. I'm talking for each individual podcast. Oh, okay. You oh, yeah. could you could have different you could have different pages for each podcast. You could have different templates, and it used to work. And you had a color scheme, but that no, they don't support that anymore. Speaking of colors, really what is it down to now? Because there are, colors do have a meaning. White is audio, black is video. Yeah, people might not have never known that. So if you're searching and you see a, a page for a show and it's a black background, you found yourself on a video podcast. They do exist. Yeah, and you know that's a good segue to just mention you should only do audio or video in one feed. You shouldn't mix the two. Why? Well, that's one thing, <laughs> because you'll confuse people looking at it on iTunes. But iTunes always wanted you to do one format. I think they even want you to keep it all like MP3 or M4A. For, for that matter. Well, it's just good practice to not mix, unless I think if you have a special event, something special, like I've put in a video, a very short video episode for podcast awards when that would come around. And that was a special thing, you know, doing it only twice a year. Uh, and I'm but not an advocate for mixing, but we're talking here about all time subscribers. Now I'm splitting my audience, right? Now I have two shows that. What if I got all of my video and my audio people to subscribe to that one channel, and now I'm going to pop up in the top category, right? Oh, well, that, that, let's <laughs> see, that's where Leo, you know, we, we, I mentioned earlier today in iOS and iOS today, and that's where, why my show beats Leo's show, because if you search for iOS today, you'll see four different shows for iOS today. You'll see an audio and three video versions. He split his audience four ways. Uh -huh. There are four versions of This Week in Tech. MP3, Video High, Video Low, and uh, Video that was, HD. That was very common back in the day, and I loved that because, uh, you know, a Video HD could take an hour to download depending on, the you know, back in the day, and I want the SD version. I don't want HD or yeah. I want audio only. If you're looking to optimize your show and search, one feed, and if you have to do video... Go put it on YouTube. Yeah. We recommend um, one only for audio, one only for video, and make it quite clear with the title that they're different as well. But uh, do not just pick one audio format. Don't try to put you know, an M4A and an MP3 version. Right. Yeah, I was really surprised. I just started listening to Ask Gary V, which is Gary Vaynerchuk. And his first episode was audio. The next one that came down was video. And I was like, really? Because I was like, I don't do video. Next, you know, it's like, I'll, do, I'll watch no, him on no, YouTube. That, that, was a that was a technical issue when, when it initially launched. Ah. They, they had some redirects that didn't work right. Interesting. Well, I'll have to go back. But yeah, if you go back now, they do have it separated. Okay, cool. Nope, nope. That was, that was something uh, when they were putting their redirects in, they put the redirects for both shows. They wanted putting the redirects both to one feed. <laughs> Instead of to the separate feeds. Nice, so, Daniel. Yeah. Any any other? What else does this does? You know, I don't know how much it is. I, I, it, because it seems but, secret. What else do you have access to in Site Manager? Um, I can actually show you. I don't. It's mind. not a secret. I've been told. <laughs> I've been told that, that I am allowed to to say. What, I, I like to saying. pretend it's a secret, though. Yes, but, it feels um, like a secret. It is a secret. Most people just don't know. The really cool stuff you get access to in this. Uh, and here's the thing: someday. If Apple ever opens up stats, I think this is what the average podcaster might someday have access to. That's pure conjecture. I don't know if they'll ever do it. But So I get to see um, a chart that I'm sharing right here of my subscriptions, my streams, or which are progressive downloads, and my downloads. I can also look at my visitors to my listing in iTunes and see how does that appear uh, along with all of these other things this having access to this a little while back gave me some great insight to the new and noteworthy stuff and what little bump it gave when my once upon a time podcast was considered noteworthy again when i think either the tv season was returning from my hiatus or it was a new season whatever the case they found my podcast noteworthy so they put it in new and noteworthy on the front page of itunes and I saw, yes, a nice little bump in downloads, 
but not very much of a bump. And in fact, looking at my site manager stats, I didn't really see any sustained increase in audience, very, very small increase in audience. I think I saw more of an increase when the series ended with the finale or the season ended than when I was featured in Noteworthy. Right. Cool. I mean, that's great. I mean, they really should give those access to the people who are helping people understand. And it lets you see that, eh, not so important. But, yeah. Rob, you said being at the yeah. top of a category does not mean you're on the in the top of the 200 overall. Yeah. And now, now, per Apple giving us stats, I just want to share that little picture there for you, Daniel. Okay. I think that, that'll explain when we're going to see that. Some type of goat, <laughs> unicorn, devil guy. Devil on ice skates. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I don't think we're going to get that information back. I don't think Apple... I, I don't know. I, I don't want to think we'll ever see it. Um, uh, some people so think it, I, I, Apple may host podcasts at some point. Now we're getting really down far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah th we'll see. I don't know if they want the headache of the... If the, they hosted the, them, I, then I would suspect we'd get some kind of stats. Well, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know... The site manager is nice if you can get access to it and you can see your stats. It really is nice, but again, it's it's a very select number and a very small percentage of all the shows get access to that information. Yeah, um, you know, just to mention, you know, the the idea of some of these uh, companies maybe hosting the media and reserving it, they're they're all going to have the all time uh, long term business model of putting ads in your content whether you like it or not. So, I hopefully we never see that day. You're talking about if iTunes, that would be their end goal, right? Would be to run ads. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right. Like, like, Google, yeah, like definitely Google. Like, like Stitcher. Stitcher does it already, right? And that's the exchange, I guess, you make when you decide to list yourself on Stitcher. Mm -hmm. And Spotify puts it before and after as well. Yeah. So I mean, again, just to clarify, Rob, if you are in the top 200 of your category, you are not in the top 200. Overall, there's a difference, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, the one show today we talked about got up to is in the top 100 right now, overall, um, near 100, but is in the top five in her subcategory or his subcategory, and the top 10 in the main category. Yeah. And uh, no, Angela. There's, I don't. There's no other chat room. It's a little slow today. This is a different time for the roundtable. This is early for the roundtable, so uh, us West Coasters still. On, on the clock. I have a day off. It's my daughter's birthday, which I don't have to run out for here pretty fast, but, uh, you know, sort of wrapping it up. Um, Daniel, you had a nice little piece of uh, wisdom here that you shared privately in our conversation. You said that the more I think about these ranking lists, the more I want to keep telling people to simply treat them as rewards, not goals. Thank you. That was, that was, that was like bumper sticker material right there. That was awesome. <laughs> Big bumper sticker, but... yeah. We'll have Dave shave it down for you. You can uh, buy those at the Audacity to podcast. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think too many people are focused on, oh, I want to get ranked. Yes, there can be a benefit to being ranked, but the, it's, it's really an indication of your success. If you make it to the top 200, I think that's what matters more. If you're in the top 200 of a category or top 10 of a category, that's what matters more than being new and noteworthy. It's a lot harder to get there, but when you get there, you're more likely to stay there because it means that you've got some really good momentum behind you, a really engaged audience, a lot of subscribers, a lot of followers, and that matters more than being featured for a couple or a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was the main goal with this. It's like when you see your show get to the top 200 or you pop up a new noteworthy or you're what's hot, what's going on? And hopefully we've made that a little bit more clear. Do we have any more questions? Not much coming in from the chat or anything else to, to sort of discuss on search? Well, well I just yeah. hope people don't take our discussion as, hey, okay, I have to optimize search by spamming my keywords. Yeah, no, I mean, we made that clear. Spam, but. Yeah, don't spam your keywords. I just want to take put yeah. that out there. You know, I, it's, I, I feel like that. I mean, hopefully that's definitely the minority. And like I said, it's always a few bad people ruin it for the majority. I think most people who watch the show will take the, the right advice and put in relevant words without adding massive strings of keywords. So listen, listen to that. And so we, we, will lose, we will lose the good parts. Yeah. You know, one other thing too that 
I, I just want to make sure people spread the word that do not pay money for advice on getting ranked on Google or on, on, on iTunes. Please don't do it. That is snake oil. Mm -hmm. Well, Daniel's got a pretty good uh, SEO product, so, yeah, which I would not say that, is snake oil. That's not getting ranked on iTunes. That's getting search results on iTunes. Big difference. Okay. Yeah, so, so someone who says, I will get you a new Noteworthy, pay me 300 bucks. Well, if anyone that says, I guarantee you audience growth, run away, run away, run away. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's your topic is the bigger thing that it, it affects whatever you, your success than anything else. I mean, if you talk about something where your audience is pretty niche, there's no way you're going to have, uh, you know, 200 or 300,000 people listening. But that's okay. People need to understand that this is all about niche content. So you have maybe three or 5,000 people that listen to your niche content. That's actually awesome because now you're, you're not just having a, you know, a million people listening and occasionally you have 5,000 super dedicated listeners. It's way more valuable. It's kind of like the difference between having small talk with everyone versus having really good, deep conversations with a few. Yeah, and so, I mean, I think the key here is that there are some things you can do when you set up your show, right, for your title and, uh, and, and your author and a couple of your tags. And then when you, if, as you produce episodes, there are a couple of cool things you can do to help yourself in search and rankings. And then beyond that, it's just then focus on creating that awesome content, which is then going to bump you up because people are going to actually subscribe when they hear that your stuff doesn't suck, right? So there's a few things you can do if you see yourself moving around inside the iTunes software, it gives you a better idea. Hopefully, we give you a better idea of what's going on there. Why am I hot? Dave, tell me why I'm hot. No. <laughs> it's a, again, a different conversation. So anyways, we will go on out here. Uh, if you guys definitely tell us where to find you. And uh, before I shut it down, any other last thoughts? Did we, did we miss something um, that, we want, that you guys wanted to say or anything else? I would just say... Because I, I literally hear about people spending, like, hours just pouring over their stats. And I really think the better use of that time is to create great content so that when people do find you... Now, granted, you still have to promote yourself, but to me, I've been actually uh, searching for new podcasts just to see what's out there. And, you know, when I find somebody that I like, I'm like, wow, that was really pretty cool. I hit subscribe. I mean, that's how I, you know, how, that's how they're getting me to subscribe is I listen to an episode. I might listen to two. And I'm like, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. And I hit subscribe. It's, it's not, uh, so yes, search matters. So, I, you know, that's how I found them. But in the end, if their show sucked, I'm like, I'm not tuning into that. There was, there was one, I won't name it, but it was a, a new podcast about podcasting. And it was horrible. And I just went, yeah, okay, not coming back for that one. So, I can say I, there was GE got into the game. They've been the, in that sort of audio drama game for a long time, but they put out one called The Message, and I was way in. It was, it was, it was basically serial-style journalism, but apparently it's fiction. It doesn't tell you anywhere it's fiction. It's, it's very hard to figure out other than when you listen. You're like, well, there's no agency like that, is there? But this was a message that they were decoding from the 70s that we'd receive from aliens, and I was like, yes, and then found out it was fiction. So from my own personal thing, I, you had... Was it the aliens that give it away? <laughs> it was the aliens. <laughs> hey, man, that's the, stuff that, that's the kind of stuff you wouldn't talk about for 30 years. So I'm just saying, you know, Limetown is, is, I think, like the number one show right now. Fiction podcasts seem to be uh, this next sort of big wave, and that goes along with storytelling. But... Yeah, produce good stuff. Uh, I would say please be transparent about what your show's about when I find it. Because <laughs> then I just get mad. And if, I, if it's something different than what I thought I was going to get, eh, I'm probably not going to stick around. So it needs to be good. Focus on making better stuff. I think uh, probably Rob's main message all the yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Soak don't, it in. And don't put dead people in your key author words <laughs> as somebody you're going to interview. Yeah, if you're doing that, you deserve to lose. So. <laughs> All right, so Angelo, thanks so much for joining late. I appreciate it, and uh, that's why I did, he did not do his homework. He, I, I got him in here really late. So thanks for showing up and sharing your insights, and let us know whatever you want to let us know. Where can we find you? Yeah, um, I'm Angelo Mandato. Um, recently started coining the term Mr. PowerPress. I had a few people calling me that lately, so I'm Mr. PowerPress now. <laughs> 
And uh, or you can find me at uh, blueberrywithoutease.com. Awesome. Yeah, what about a Twitter handle? Because if you're Mr. PowerPress, we're going to want to tweet you questions. And did, yeah. you opened your own box of, of... Yeah, I need to get that registered. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well... Yeah, no, it's uh, Angelo Mandato. All one Angelo word. Mandato. All right, yeah. very cool. And just check the show notes if you need help spelling that. Daniel, thanks again for joining us. My closing advice would be market your podcast as if Apple will do nothing whatsoever for you. Because then you'll grow your audience legitimately and you'll have a better connection with your audience. And then anything else is just an extra cherry on top of the cake of icing. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the audacity to podcast.com and the ramen noodle on Twitter. I want a cake of icing. That's it. I want a whole <laughs> cake of icing. That sounds great. I'm just shove my face right in there <laughs> with the cherry on top. Of course, Dave Jackson, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I've already given my, my final words. Um, and again, just, um, Dave, do you ever have final words? I, I yeah, like, it just keeps going. But yeah, Dave Jackson, School of Podcasting dot com. I mean, I had uh, I interviewed Jason Bryan my last episode, and I had like five people say, "Wow, that was a really good." And they're telling other people, so that's how you grow your audience. Make content that gets people to talk about it. You know what? I did see that, and it did make me want to go listen. So you are very, you are very correct. I happen to see that someone said it was the best, and you, I mean, that's like episode like three hundred and well, I don't know, it could be four hundred ten. What do you want now? Uh, four eighty-four. It took Dave four hundred and eighty-four episodes. episodes. His best interview ever. <laughs> so <laughs> when you get to episode nine and you think that the show is not succeeding <laughs> or no one has found you, you're not rich. And yeah. you want to bail? Well, you probably should just bail. But, man, <laughs> this is a long game, and it takes a lot of work and practice. All right, thanks, Dave. And Rob, as always, i got to watch out. Rob might be getting close to a T-shirt, so this may be his last appearance. Uh, uh, Rob at Libsyn.com, if you want to get a hold of me, is the easiest way. R-O-B at L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. Or you can check out my podcast today on iOS if you're into the iPhone and, and not the Android side of things. Yeah, and you know, for this audience, I will actually give two shout-outs for, for sort of the raw voice, Blueberry side, and Lipson. Lipson uh, has the feed. If you, if you watch or listen to uh, Podcast Roundtable, you would love the feed. It's a podcast about podcasting, and it's not just about Lipson. I get some of the best tips. I thought I heard everything Rob had to say, but I, not true. He, he really delivers there, and as you could see, Rob is a numbers guy. <laughs> he digs in, so you'll get the numbers on the feed. Check that out. And then my, one of my other favorite shows, New Media Show, uh, works, uh, Todd Cochran works with Angelo and, and Rob Greenlee, guys you've seen here they have a new media show, I really love that one it's long format about about our space and, and the new really revamped uh, Power Press podcast ah, that uh, right. Blueberry's now putting out so. and I, I'll tell you what, we're probably three more episodes before we actually polish it, <laughs> so don't, I know it, it needs critiquing <laughs> So. Yeah, see, there you go. Sometimes it being new, no worthy, and you have an unpolished show. Well, I think Rob alluded to that. Maybe you don't want to be found in the beginning. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's it's good content, but we don't have an intro and outro for the new show. So. Sure, but I think it relates to a lot of podcasters in the beginning. I mean, there is this sort of thing where I don't want people to, to, to focus so much on having to be perfect that they don't launch and or they're so scared that uh, people are going to hear it and it's not going to be what they want. Get out there, like make it something listenable, make it decent, and and work as you go. But you know, anyways, just don't spend forever planning. Get your show out there. <laughs> All right, podcastersroundtable.com. Uh, we will see you for round sixty. And thanks, everybody. Wave goodbye. Ciao.